Hi, we continue with our discussion of unit uh, 3 in financial reporting and analysis and continue uh, with income statements. Now we've already seen uh, broadly what's the what's the broad structure of an income statement and uh, how does the revenue and cost structure come into being. Now the more important part that will come to us is in terms of actually figuring out how the revenues and expenses get recognized, right? So in this particular video, we're going to talk about the revenue recognition methods as to how do you recognize whether a sale has happened or not happened and uh, what is the implication of all this recognition into the uh, into the statement, right? We'll take a few examples and understand that and then uh, at a later point, we're going to kind of try and construe that in terms of individual company and their income statements. So. We'll just quickly recap when exactly do we account for sales and expenses when a business basically sells goods to the customer Essentially the sale is booked once the ownership has transferred the hands from a vendor to a business That's when the expense is booked and ownership has been transferred from the business to the customer That's when the sale is booked, right? So broadly it's uh, it's when ownership gets transferred but in some cases that may or may not be so easy to figure out right ownership transfer while is the easiest way to figure out when there is a good or service being offered in certain cases that may or may not be so easy to kind of calculate right so for example in services businesses how do you do it there are multiple other cases where exactly ownership transfer may not be so easy to kind of figure out right now revenue recognition can occur independently of any kind of cash movements Right, so the cash flow has got nothing to do with the with the revenue uh, uh, recognition. The sale of goods and services can happen on credit, basically, uh, where you will you will find the receivable, essentially that will come in, and receipt of cash in advance of providing of goods and services can also happen. So basically, the cash could come in at a different point. The revenue will get recognized based on certain principles only specific to the revenue recognition now a fundamental principle of accrual accounting is that revenue is recognized in the period in which it is earned when we say recognized by recognized we mean reported in the income statement so when is it earned is the question for us once we know that it has been earned in that period then it has to be recognized in the income statement in that particular period itself right now let's understand how do you define whether the revenue has been earned in that period right so sale of goods and services rendered sale of services basically so in the case of goods when risk and reward of ownership is transferred so as soon as the ownership is kind of transferred, that's when it is assumed when we say risk and reward. So for example, there is a, a, a seller. There is a seller who is uh, selling goods to a buyer and there is a truck that is being transferred. A container of goods is being transferred, right? The moment the risk and reward of ownership is transferred. So it could be that, uh, you know, let's say I'm selling it from Mumbai and someone is buying it in Chennai so essentially depending on what is the contract it's possible that when the truck leaves my factory the sale and reward of ownership the risk is transferred whose uh, ownership is there is a part of the sale contract so it's possible that the buyer says that till the time you deliver it to my factory it is your risk in which case it will be considered till the time it reaches here if I am able to kind of get a term saying that you know I that transportation is not my headache so I can sell it from my factory you get it picked up and you take it then the sale is kind of considered here so there's a slight timing difference that can occur but basically the moment the risk and reward of ownership is transferred that's considered a sale of goods or when there's no continuing control or management of the goods sold when I have given the goods out of my building and someone else has management of it it's uh, the, the transportation could have been outsourced Revenue can be reliably measured at that point of time. There is a probable flow of economic benefits. So I was giving the revenue and uh, I, I get the cash at that this point of time or the cost can be reliably measured in any of these cases. The sale of goods is considered done right in the case of services. You consider the revenue as earned if the amount of revenue can be reliably measured. If there is a probable flow of economic benefits if the stage of completion can be measured 
or if the cost incurred and cost of completion can be reliably measured i'll take an example and explain this in terms of how do you look at um, cost incurred and cost of completion or the stage of completion here as well as the stage of completion in in the context of uh, in the context of uh, sale of goods right now there are specific situations where revenue recognition will become tricky so we will look at each of these situations the first one is a long term contract let's say lnt building an airport right now lnt building an airport is going to probably happen over 3 to 4 years so that's a long term contract now if they are building the airport and the government has said they will pay lnt 12000 crore for it over 3 years what is the revenue recognition in the first year remember cash flow may have no bearing here so that's one part then installment sales so houses for example are sold or installments or cars are sold or installment or some some installment sale happen typically an installment will have the sale amount and there will be an interest component because there is an installment that is happening there right so how do you look at that barter transaction is where no cash is exchanged basically people are exchanging goods for another good or services for goods or services for services essentially right so how do you recognize the revenue in those context that becomes the important crux of figuring out these three situations so let's understand each one of these long term contracts are contracts spanning over a number of accounting periods as we looked at the example of uh, of uh, lnt here percentage completion method is used and the cost how much cost is undertaken decides the revenue booking right so take an example of the lnt airport let's assume that we are saying that the airport is going to be giving a revenue of 12000 crore and lnt is going to take a cost of 10000 crore so that's the revenue and this is the cost total cost over 3 years that's the that's the discussion that we have right now at the end of year 1 2 and 3 how do you book the revenues right now there's no real way of figuring out how much revenue should have happened in because the government might have said i'll give you the entire amount at the end of 3 years right once you give me the airport i'll give you the money so how much revenue should lnt book in the first year one answer is when they get cash they should only book it there but that's incorrect because we're looking at accrual accounting here the second answer is they divide it equally into 3 years but then that is again going to penalize because a lot of these things might get completed in the second year but testing itself might take the third year right so they will unnecessarily get penalized because of that so what is used is the percentage completion method and under this you figure out how much cost has been already taken let's assume 3000 crore worth of cost is already taken here right so what is that as a percentage of total cost 30% so you are assuming that the project is 30% complete if the project is 30% complete you are going to assume that the revenue is also 30% of the total revenue number if in the second year you take another 5000 crore of cost that's 50% more done so another revenue would be 6000 crore and then obviously in the third year whatever is the remaining will come so in longer term contracts you will basically build, build this in terms of how much cost has been undertaken that leaves it open to some sort of subjectivity because a company can over report costs or inflate costs in order to over report revenue that discussion will come at a later point where we will look at some checks and balances about how companies try and do that but in general that's the accounting method where we are trying to figure out how much of the cost has been undertaken and based on that we are trying to arrive at a number as to what is going to be the uh, what is going to be the percentage of revenue that the firm has basically accrued in that period right so that's that's basically the structure of revenue in terms of long term contracts now if there is an installment sale where payments are in installment so there is going to be a sale value and there is going to be a interest component right so what you do is let's say installments are going to come in the form of 100 in the first year 100 in the second year and 100 in the third year so you figure out how much of this 100 is the sale value plus interest sale value plus interest sale value plus interest right 
you look at all the sale value components and you find the present value of the sale value sale value being the amount so if you're selling a car for example for uh, for 3 lakhs maybe 1 lakh comes in the first year sec 2 lakh comes in the second year 3 lakh comes in the third year third lakh right so 1 2 and 3 so we are saying that uh, the car's cost maybe is 2.7 you're going to give 1 lakh right now 1 lakh next year and 1 lakh the year after that right so the cost is 3 2.7 but you're paying 30,000 of interest that gives you 3 lakhs right now in the first year this is only principal because there is obviously no cost so you're giving this money right away second year uh, you have let's say let's argument sake we are saying that uh, the interest component in the second year uh, is 85 plus 15 0.85 and 0.15 right and again here is 0.85 plus 0.15 so how are you going to book the revenue present value of 1 0 0.85 and 0 0.85 is going to be booked now and the 0 0.15 and 0 0.15 is going to be booked in the second year and third year because that interest is coming there so interest payments are booked in the year when they are happening present value of the sale value is booked now let's revisit this to make this clear so what we are saying is that let's say there is a car that is worth 2.7 lakhs and it is being sold for 3 lakhs right so how much is the interest component 30,000 that's the interest component right let's say the first year is 1 lakh the second year is 1 lakh the third year is 1 lakh right and this does not contain a, a, a EMI this contains 0 0.85 plus 0 0.15 this contains 0 0.85 plus 0 0.15 let's assume this is the structure so the today's sale now or this year what you're going to book is the present value of only the sale component which is 1 0.85 and 0.85 I'm taking a simple example here right so 1 0 0.85 and 0 0.85 I'm not writing them as 2.7 because they're happening at different times so one is happening today 0.85 is happening after a year 0.85 is happening after another year right you to find the present value of these three the present value can basically be found uh, using uh, so 0.85 next year is not the same as 0.85 today right so it's probably worth lesser so you'll find and try and find what is the current value of that and discussion on present value will come at a later stage we'll discuss that in more detail the 0.15 will happen in that subsequent year that's the interest component so what is happening in year one and what's happening in year two will get accounted there when it gets done right that's how it comes as installment sales don't worry about uh, this in case it is not very clear at this point of time because it will obviously get repeated as we go along then there are barter transactions where two parties exchange goods without or services without cash payment under IFRS international financing financial reporting standards revenue from barter transactions are basically assumed to be the fair value of similar revenues uh, similar non barter tran transaction right so let's say I exchange uh, I exchange uh, one car with uh, three bikes right let's say I, I do this I exchange one car with three bikes so effectively the revenue will be what is the fair value of one car or what is the fair value with three bikes right that's what uh, is considered as the as the revenue number in that context so that's what we'll book that's what is the number we will uh, put in our income statement next concept that comes is something called as gross and net revenue reporting now consider the case of Flipkart Flipkart is sort of a trading company it's a retail company let's say it sells a book for 300 while the cost of the book is 280 so what should be the revenue from them for them right they sell a book worth to it 300 uh, the cost of it is 280 now technically Flipkart is just trading they never really produced anything right so I buy a book from someone at 280 and give it to you for 300 should my sales be 20 because all my costs will be taken out from this 20 or should my sales be 300 so under the cross reporting of revenue sales would be 300 cost of goods sold would be 280 and then you get to the value of 20 and then you remove all your further costs from that 20 to get to the net profit under net reporting 
it's only trading the book so sales is 20 and you remove your costs that comes to the net profit in both the cases remember the net profit is going to be the same these costs are the, my costs or Flipkart's cost which is uh, salary of the delivery boy or electricity of the warehouse etc that is there right net profit is the same but the revenue number is bigger in gross and smaller in net right now typically companies use the gross method but that's just for understanding as to what is gross and what is net that's an important area for us to discuss right so that that basically brings us to an end of this particular section where uh, we discussed about revenue recognition quick couple of questions here explain the concept of revenue recognition from a long-term project perspective and what is the difference between cross and net revenue reporting 